Good morning, YouTube friends. Okay, y'all, I'm having my very last fire in the fireplace of the year because it was about 45 degrees this morning and I, in my effort to try and find something warm to put on when I woke up, uh, I managed to grab a pair of shorts that was not warm. So, I made a fire, probably our last fire of the year, and we're kicking off the March Garden Tour today. Woo! Applause! Um, <clears throat> I am in a very special mood today because I am stressed and overwhelmed. I have a meeting in like an hour. I'm not dressed. Um, I'm leaving for a weekend trip and I need to pack, but also I need to film the March Garden Tour before March is like over. So we are going to look at the garden, get a lay of the land, um, and we'll see if I can get this video out on Friday and do all of the other things I need to do in life. I'm having like that moment where I'm like, can she do it? And then there's like, there's like background noise and there's like a bunch of like people being like, yeah, she can. I just, if I play that over and over again in my head, I can, I can get everything done, right? Right, right. Okay, y'all, we are slightly more prepared for the day than we were a few minutes ago. Um, and I have more coffee because the first cup of coffee is so that you can be a human being and the second one is so that you can be a productive human being. <laughs> So if this is your first time here, welcome. This is Seed to Plate channel um, where we talk all things urban and suburban gardening. We're gonna get into some cooking content once the harvests are coming in. I am in a suburban neighborhood in Austin, Texas. I have a full-time job in tech um, and me and my partner live in a rental house where we have a backyard and I also have a community garden plot that I've had for about three years. So kind of started this channel to encourage people who don't necessarily own their own home um, or have sprawling lands that they too can garden and tend to beautiful things. So, welcome if this is your first time here. If you are a returning visitor, welcome back. I'm happy to have you. Um, I always hate doing this part, but um, if you like the video, like and subscribe because that really helps me. Um, and also it just makes me feel nice and everybody wants to feel nice. So um, today for the garden tour, um, I would get yourself settled, um, get yourself a beverage because uh, these are usually a little bit on the longer side. Um, we're basically just gonna go through and I just planted out my spring garden. So we're just gonna talk about everything that's in the ground and I'm going to show you around for the first garden tour of 2022. Also, um, I'm gonna say this because I am a Texan, but also because it's correct. Yetis are the best insulated mugs. There, I said it. Okay, y'all, so we have lived in this rental house since August of 2020. So it's been about a year and a half. And I built all the gardens that you're gonna see back here um, using the no-till method. So I would do a ton of research on the no-till method, see if it's right for you. I have some videos on it, but like they're not great because they were from my early YouTube days. So watch them at your own risk. Um, but the first garden bed we're gonna talk about and look at um, is actually the only one that I did not build back here. This is my herb bed. Now it's not looking too impressive right at this very moment, um, but we do have some really good looking parsley. Parsley tends to do really well here in central Texas. We have some rosemary that also tends to do well, but this backyard is on the lower end of light. Um, some cilantro that's bolting because it's getting warm. Some trimmings that I forgot to throw away because I'm busy. Um, this is peppermint. I love growing peppermint um, because I love fresh peppermint tea. And then this is curly leaf parsley, which I literally never ever use, but it's nice to look at. Um, so this flat right here are seeds that I started, and this is mostly basil. Um, there's some parsley in here, um, but we have cinnamon basil, just your regular old Genovese and sweet basil. We have Thai basil, and we have purple basil. So once those get to a good appropriate size, those will get planted out 
in here and then along the back here um, I actually have dahlia tubers on their way that are gonna be here on Friday and I am so excited um, so I'm gonna attempt to grow dahlias it's a little more difficult here where it's hot um, but we're gonna give it a go so this is kind of my little like I call it my my hobbit hole like herb bed it's very like cottagey it's a little bit wild um, and I just really like it that way to be honest with you my herbs seem to do well here because in the summer when it's super super hot um, this garden gets a break from the afternoon sun so usually the sun will like leave this garden space around like three to four o'clock which is when it's really hot here in the dead of the summer is, is really like at night or like in that late evening um, before the sun goes down. And then we have a beautiful little patch of marigolds. These were all just leftover flowers that I had. Um, and then this beautiful thing is actually a rescued lemon tree. <laughs> and this lemon tree was literally grown from a lemon seed from the grocery store by one of my best friend's uh, grandparents. I told this story on the channel before, so I'll tell a very abbreviated version. Um, but that lemon tree, I I call it I call it the repoed lemon tree. <laughs> the reason that I call it the repoed lemon tree is because that lemon tree um, was left at one of my best friend's ex-boyfriend's house, um, namely right outside the patio, and it always belonged to her. Um, but she does not live somewhere where she can have it. So at first she didn't take it, and then she wanted it because it's like a family heirloom from her grandparents. And so I actually offered to go repossess it with her, and so. <laughs> On a very chilly morning last fall, we um, took a large vehicle out to this person's house um, and took the tree off the front patio and did it very quietly. Um, and it felt like a covert operation. Truthfully, at the end of the day, I don't think he would have given a shit, um, but it was just kind of fun. So that lemon tree was actually always an inside plant. Um, and this is its first time being outside, so it's definitely taken quite an adjustment period for that tree to be outside. Um, but my friend really wants to see if it'll produce lemons. So I have adopted the lemon tree <laughs> for now. Um, and we're just gonna see how it does. I've covered it during every freeze and it's still alive and it's putting off a lot of new growth. So crossing my fingers to see how it's gonna go. The trunk was super weak when I first got it. Like I thought it was gonna blow over and crack. Um, but yeah, so that's the story of the repossessed lemon tree that's not really mine, <laughs> but that I have uh, unofficially adopted into the garden. These are just some flats of flowers that I need to figure out what to do with. There's some snapdragons. I don't even know if these are really gonna do much. Um, these are different types of marigolds. Um, these are red flame celosia, um, some more snapdragons, and then Mexican torch sunflowers that are probably like hella root bound at this point. Yeah, those need to, those need to go in the ground sooner rather than later. Um, so these are all just some flowers that I was attempting to start from seed. And then this bed right here, this bed I created last year using the no-till method. Um, and last year it had two rows, it had two rows of tomatoes, okay? This year I decided not to do that because I discovered that the tomatoes in the back were really hard to get to, um, both to pick tomatoes, but also to prune. So all of my tomato plants are along the back and I'm gonna do a whole video on different tomato trellising methods, but these are all mixed together. Last year I had these really fun sections where it was like, this is the cherry section, and this is the slicer section, and this is this section. I'm trying to like be a little bit more um, spontaneous, if you will, um, about my planting and not having it be like so stringently like, like this is organization because I have a corporate job. I live in organization and processes every single day. And so I'm attempting in my creative life uh, in the garden to not be that way. But you know, we'll see how that goes. 
So we've got a bunch of different varieties. We've got some brandy wines, that's a yellow brandy wine. And this type, um, these brandy wines that I have are potato leaf variety. So this is what they call a potato leaf because um, it kind of looks like potato plant leaves. And this is your traditional tomato leaf, kind of like this fan structure. It almost reminds me a little bit more of like a fern than like this kind of a leaf. So we've got some brandy wines, Cherokee purples, which are one of my favorites another type of brandy wine uh that one doesn't have a label so we'll find out what that one is um i will say my sun golds and my cherry tomatoes are usually my strongest this time of year so my sun gold has a bunch of blossoms on it already um and we're just gonna leave those guys there so again that one doesn't have a label either every year i say that i'm not gonna have mystery plants i'm like brooke this is your year to like label things I still end up with mystery plants. So we have all of our tomatoes and these tomatoes, this is probably like a seven, six to seven foot fence. Um, these tomatoes will probably be up here. Um, my neighbors could basically just pick the tomatoes. Um, and so we have all of our tomatoes in this bed. We also have eggplants. Eggplants do really well here. Um, we have just a traditional black Black Beauty eggplant and then a Rosa Bianca. This one's pretty small. I'm not sure how this one's gonna do. We might have to replace it, but TBD on that. Um, and then we have some little nasturtiums. I did start these inside. I have some problems germinating things out here um, because we're on the lower end of sunlight. Um, and then I also just went to the store and I grabbed some dianthus and some petunias just to kind of fill things in um, and make it look really nice. This is a new type of squash for me called tatum squash, tatume, tatum. Um, and this type of squash is supposedly squash vine borer resistant. Now, if you garden in a squash vine borer area, I'm sorry because I do too and it's terrible because all I want is a damn zucchini. But no, there's this evil little moth creature that lays its eggs on the zucchini plant and if you don't scrape off the eggs or prevent it in any way, you end up with a dead squash plant. So this type of squash actually is from Mexico where they have squash vine borers so it has evolved to be a little more resistant. TBD, I'm still growing other types of squash. I'm doing some zucchini and some crookneck squash that are definitely gonna get nailed by squash vine borers, but I've heard the earlier you start them, maybe you get squash. It feels like that ex-boyfriend that you keep going back to and you're like, it's gonna be different this time and it never is. That's how growing squash feels for me. So we have some zucchini. We're gonna try the tatum squash. Um, we just have more tomatoes, more different types of tomatoes. I feel like tomato varieties are hard to talk about until you actually get the tomatoes because they all just look like tomato plants until you actually get a tomato in your hand. My Vego garden bed is next. This is a corrugated metal garden bed. Highly recommend the Vego garden beds. I think they're great. Put some leftover flowers in here. Um, I also spread some chamomile and some cosmo seeds like right in the middle and then I'll actually be planting some of the dahlia tubers in the back. Oh, it looks like we might have germination on something. I see something green. That is what is destined for this area. So it doesn't look very impressive right now, but I'm hoping that it will become this like lovely place of flowers and wild things. Also, this Vego garden bed does not have anything on the bottom of it. And I have a whole video describing how I filled this um, without like completely breaking the bank um, because your girl's on a budget. Um, so there are tons of ways you can fill a big raised garden bed like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not warm out here. And I'm basically a lizard, so. Um, there are tons of good ways to fill these types of raised garden beds that don't require spending like literally thousands of dollars on soil. But that's what's destined for this bed is just a bunch of beautiful flowers. And then if we flip over here, this is a blueberry bush um, that some of our very dear friends got for us. Last year, I only got one blueberry. This year, I have hopefully more than one blueberry, <laughs> but we will see. So I have at least one, but this is a blueberry bush. Here's another bare root blueberry bush. 
This is another bare root. I think it might have gotten too cold, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kill it yet. I'm gonna see if it'll come back. This is another garden bed that I built. This one's now probably a year and a half old. Um, and it went through a brief makeover this year. Um, but we have a similar situation here where we have all the tomatoes in the back and those will line the back fence and get nice and tall. And then the next row is mostly peppers. We have some tomatillos right here. And you always wanna plant your tomatillos next to each other because they need friends. They need to be able to pollinate each other. Um, so after that we have rows of peppers and then we have another row of peppers um except for that one that my dog decided to lay on however it might be coming back so i think i might leave it and see what happens so we've got peppers here we've got more squash um you know the ex-boyfriend that we keep going back to for lord only knows what reason and then down here we have okinawa spinach so okinawa spinach this was sent to me by a subscriber a garden friend um, and it's doing really well. Um, I've tasted it. It's kind of like a salad green that's really, really hearty. Um, and then we've just got more marigolds here in the front that should fill things in really nicely. Well, we've got marigolds, dianthus, and some petunias. All my hands freezing. Couldn't find my real jacket because I'm a southerner who doesn't need to own these things. Now, y'all, I... I used to listen to this podcast, okay, and uh, it was it was it was for people who like to garden and like be at home and all that stuff. And these two ladies are just grossly judgmental. And they one day they're very into like the English potager cottage style gardens. Um, they were talking some mad shit about marigolds, and I was like it's a marigold like who hates marigolds and so a word about marigolds real quick they're deer resistant the deer won't eat them they keep away pests because of the smell they're actually incredibly important to the mexican culture which is pretty like heavy here in texas um and i just think they're beautiful like they're and they grow really well here in this area so um I love marigolds and you should too. And anybody who talks shit about them is um, maybe just kind of a judgmental jerk that you shouldn't have in your life. Honestly, between that moment of them really hating on the marigolds and then also uh, the name Chili Riano was pronounced Chili Rilano, I just about lost my mind. Okay, but I'm done throwing shade for now. So I'm super excited for this garden bed. Um, I did redesign it. I used to have arches and I don't have those anymore. So really pumped for this. Um, these are just two extra flats for my parents. And then this is a blackberry bush that I'm trying to get to hold on here. It's doing okay, but it definitely got put through the ringer. And then these tomatoes are actually called micro dwarf tomatoes and I'm testing them because um, they could be really, really good for like patio gardeners. Um, so stay tuned to see these guys. That one's called Tasmanian chocolate. Um, I think one of these is an Aztec micro and then I'm not sure what this guy is. And then we have the green stalk which I really need to get replanted with some new strawberries. That is what's in here right now are some strawberries. And they're coming back. They're looking pretty good, but I definitely lost a few. Like, I don't think that guy's coming back. But I love having something like strawberries in here that I can just like leave in here um, and they can come back. But love a good green stalk. If you guys are looking for a vertical planter option, these are really great. Now in the grow bag alley, kind of a weird name, but that's what I call it. We're actually doing cucumbers this year. So I have these, <laughs> I have these really tall poles and I actually used quickcrete to concrete these in and then I, in a bucket and then I dug a hole for the bucket. Um, and last year what I did was I had tomatoes in here and then I used the floor to weave between the two poles. This year, I'm actually gonna be hanging a massive net and do, we're gonna do a giant, green 
wall of cucumbers that I'm really excited about. So um, some of my cucumbers are silver slicers. We have loofahs. Um, we have lemon cucumbers. Um, market more Armenian white cucumbers, which are actually not cucumbers, but they're melons. Um, and straight eight. So basically just a bunch of different types of cucumbers. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty pumped about it to be honest. Uh, but I have to hang the trellis net. Oh my God, that breeze was so cold. And some of you watching this probably think I'm insane because you probably live in cold places and you're like, Brooke, you should grow up. And you know what, maybe you're right. <laughs> So the last part of the backyard garden is this little mini orchard, question mark? Orchard. Um, but I have some citrus trees here. So this is a type of lemon um, that I believe is called the lemonade lemon. I need to find the actual name for it. Um, but that's what this guy is and it's putting on a ton of new growth. It's wild. Um, watching citrus trees grow is like honestly crazy. Um, this is my Meyer lemon, which I thought was looking pretty rough and it still is on some places, but look at that. Those are blossoms. So it's putting off a few blossoms. There's a couple over here. So I'm very anxious to see like, if I get a few lemons out of this, we'll see. Um, this is my key lime. Um, and I actually got this uh, in a very emotional moment because I wanted to make my boyfriend a key lime pie. Um, but I think we've got a few blossoms on this guy too. So I'm pretty pumped. I invested in these trees um, to satisfy my curiosity, but also because um, we are moving next year. Um, so we intend on buying a house and I would love to be able to put these trees like in the ground. Um, and so putting them in pots and being able to get them up to a size, um, you know, where they're gonna look really nice in the ground was kind of my goal. This beautiful creature, this is a Eureka pink lemon tree, and I'm excited to get some fruit off of it. It has these beautiful pink leaves um, that they kind of start pink and then they end up to be this like beautiful variegated situation. And this guy had a few blossoms on it in December, but I think it was just confused because our weather was so warm. So I don't know if it's gonna put off any, oh! Timing is everything. So it looks like it's putting off a few new blossoms. So I might get lemons this year, we'll see. Um, yeah, oh man, I'm pumped. I thought I lost all my blossoms. So we'll see if I get lemons out of this this year, but I'm pretty excited. And then in the front, we have a couple of blackberry cuttings that I'm trying to get to be nice and strong and healthy. Um, this is a, I believe this is a grape. Yeah, Granny Val. Oh, and it's self-fertile, nice. So this is a type of grape, and actually there are some varieties of grapes that grow really well here in Texas. And it looks like, I thought it was dead. Should have known better. It's not. It's got little leaves on it. So we have a grape vine. Um, and then this is a fig. And I'm not 100% sure if this guy's gonna come back. So we'll see if this one comes back. TBD. Um, this is a cutting from a peach tree that I rooted, and this peach tree was actually from uh, my community garden. It's a whole community garden tour up on my channel from a few months ago, but um, the community garden has a whole orchard, um, and I knew that I was going to be moving next year, which means I won't be part of my community garden anymore, which is a very big bummer, but I still have plenty of time there to enjoy it. Um, so. I really wanted to root some of the tree cuttings um, as like this, I don't know, romantic notion of <laughs> like having a piece of my first big gardening experience. Am I crazy? I don't know. Um, but this was the only one that took. So I'm from the community garden. So I'm super pumped when it started getting blossoms on it, y'all. I just about lost my mind. <laughs> was so excited. These are some plums. These are called Odom plums. And these I got actually as like bare roots. So I put them in the ground with the roots and they're coming in really nicely as well. So we have a couple of plum trees. 
here you can see the the growth coming out so that was more of a bare root situation where they came to me with the roots and I put them in the ground but I have a bunch of other tree cuttings that I've rooted um, well I don't know if the term is technically that they've rooted but they're at least putting off leaves and like buds so there's there's something happening I don't know exactly what it is but there's something going on so some of these got we had a really bad thunderstorm the other day and I think some of these just got a little displaced um, but these are a bunch of cuttings that I was sent from a subscriber and they all pretty much have taken root so we have a ton of different figs and plums we have we have chickshaw plums that's what these are and then this is a green ischia fig so that's what this is um, and then we have Olympian figs I think there's this is a goofy plum I still need to figure out how to say that uh, Mary Lane fig and then a LSU black fig so um, guys I basically am just growing a whole baby orchard it's like baby orchard mafia. Also, I have some other cuttings over here. These are from apple trees, and I'm still not sure if they've done anything or if these are just sticks and dirt at this point. But when I scratch the twig, I'm still getting green. So if you know anything about rooting apple tree cuttings, let your girl know. And then we have another fig right here that I, of course, don't have a label for. Maybe I wrote it on here. Nope, of course I didn't. So I don't have a label for that fig, but it's definitely a very nice one that's coming along. Okay y'all, my fingers, my fingers are frozen. Very cold, <laughs> but it's gonna warm up. It's supposed to be like close to 80 today. So um, that's the weird thing about Texas. You get these wild temperature swings. So I have to go join a meeting and probably eat some breakfast that my lovely partner probably already made for me because he's a wonderful human. And yeah. We'll go to the community plot later when it's warmer outside. Hey y'all, welcome to the community garden plot. Um, I decided to go ahead and come out here same day because I just needed some, needed some garden time. I had a rough day to be honest with you. So we're gonna go around the community plot and show you everything that's growing. I'm attempting a late summer garden, which is pretty hard to accomplish in the South because it gets so hot so fast. Um, so we're gonna go over what is in the community plot. Uh, my community plot is 10 feet by 20 feet. Um, it's just a big block. Um, and then I have half of another plot that has some beds. So we will show you everything going on here. All right, y'all, so these concrete planters that I have, I have never actually had issues with them. Um, a lot of people wonder if they're gonna retain heat. Um, I actually find that they do really well. Um, so I actually just planted the long sides of the concrete blocks with a bunch of different types of zinnias and some of them are starting to come up. I planted these uh, late last week, I think on Sunday maybe. Um, let me show you, I know, oh there's one. So some of my zinnias are starting to pop up and zinnias are definitely one of my favorite flowers to grow because they do really, really well in the heat, like really, really well. Um, so big favorite of mine to grow for zinnias um, and they just last and the more you cut, the more you get. I just, I, I love growing zinnias. And then on the short ends of my plot, I planted different types of marigolds which are coming up and marigolds are really good for pest control like we talked about earlier and then i also planted um i'm not sure if yeah this is definitely grass <laughs> i also planted some nasturtium um as well as some uh calendula so that is what's planted in the concrete planters i've also planted herbs in here and they do really really well and actually there's some herbs that i will never get rid of um this mint this is spearmint uh, makes really really good tea this comes back every single year without fail um, and I planted this here like three years ago so this comes back every year this is peppermint that never seems to die um, so this peppermint also comes back every single year and then this oregano patch this oregano was originally just one of these blocks and now it's taking over one two three four five six six of them so uh yeah i have oregano for days honestly um and i've found that if you have an oregano patch and you kind of let it die off you really want to get rid of some of this dead stuff um, to allow the new oregano to really come through 
Um, so that's been something that I've had to learn over the years um, is to let the new oregano find itself. It'll also crawl and really like create this, this blanketing effect. Um, so if you have an area that you don't want to keep mulching and you want like kind of a quote unquote like a living mulch, um, something like oregano is a really, really good option. Also convinced that my sage will never die, um, which is fine. The sage, I, I honestly need to really prune it back. Um, and it's also seemed to travel into my plant. <laughs> And then here we have our onion patch. So these are Texas legend white onions. And then there's uh, early grano yellow onions. Um, so they're looking really good and healthy. Um, I'm not sure how the bulb development is looking. It's looking pretty good. Um, but these will probably really head up here pretty soon. And I'll probably be harvesting onions, I would think in like May. I think it's probably when I will be harvesting these onions. And just in this small patch, just taking up probably a third of the plot, there's actually 70 onions, like seven zero. You can really cram stuff like that in because as they bulb up, as they bulb up, as long as their roots have enough room, they'll just kind of push away from each other. Um, so I'm super pumped about growing onions. They're pretty frost hardy um, and they usually come out with the onion sets. I grow them from like the actual starts, um, <clears throat> like the little baby onions um, that look like green onions. That's how I plant these. And they usually have those in the nurseries here in Texas in about January. We also have the garlic. So this garlic has been in the ground since probably, I don't know, October. So it's happening, it's sizing up real well. It's getting nice and thick at the base. It's definitely what you want. Um, but this garlic won't be ready probably until June or July. Uh, garlic takes a really long time and I didn't really have the patience for it last year. Um, but it's looking really, really nice. I have elephant garlic. Um, I have an Italian type of garlic that I don't remember what it's called. Um, and then I'm pretty sure that little patch over there is another kind of garlic. Truthfully, I, I don't really remember. There's definitely some other types though that are much, much more delicate. Um, so I probably need to give these guys a nice fertilize because they take a lot of nutrients. So garlic is gonna take you about nine months to grow it. Um, it takes a really long time and it is a pretty heavy feeder. So you wanna make sure you're giving it enough fertilizer. Um, but I'm really pumped because we use garlic in our cooking a lot. Um, and also I'm pumped for the onions because one of my favorite things to make for like a cheese board, if I'm feeling bougie, is uh, bacon onion jam. Y'all, you, you can't really can that stuff, but it is delicious. And then the last part of the community plot is actually my taters. So uh, my boyfriend got really excited about growing potatoes and he actually came out here and planted them with me, which uh, Cam in the garden is not a super, super frequent occurrence, but I do love it when it happens. And so these are looking really, really nice. Um, now I am gonna have to mulch these here pretty soon. I buried them probably about a foot deep. But the thing with potatoes is you have to keep them mulched because if the potatoes, the actual potatoes that are growing, if they get to the sun and they turn green, they're actually poisonous. So I'm not trying to grow poison potatoes. Um, and there's a few different kinds. There's Purple Majesty, Kennenbeck, red potatoes, and then I had some kitchen scrap potatoes that honestly I'm pretty shocked are coming up. So this is my first time growing, actually it's my first time growing everything in this batch, potatoes, onions, and garlic. Um, I've grown zinnias and all the flowers plenty of times, but yeah, really, really pumped about this. So the potatoes should be ready um, probably around like May, June timeframe. Um, the garlic should be ready June, July, and the onions should be ready um, in like, late May, early June. Um, so definitely a lot of really exciting stuff to look forward to for the spring garden. Um, and then this garden, once that's all done, will actually turn over to what I'm calling my like late summer garden. It's probably late summer for a lot of people, but it's actually like right in the thick of summer for Texas. And I'm gonna be growing really heat tolerant stuff like okra um, and like melons and sweet potatoes. So that's everything that'll go in here because this plot gets a full 12 hours of sunlight in the summer. like full 
12 hours. It gets hot, it has direct sun, and it needs stuff that can take that. Um, my tomatoes will probably peter out by about August. It just gets too hot for them. And speaking of tomatoes, we had all of one tomato casualty. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's done. Uh, we had a really, really bad storm um, this, this week, this, uh, this week we had like a tornado warning. It was a whole thing. Um, so this guy broke, which is very sad. However, what I'm going to try and do, cause this is one of my determinate tomatoes. What I'm going to attempt to do is all of these little hairs on the tomato stem will actually form roots. So I am actually going to, we're going to, we're going to do an experiment all of us together. So I'm gonna make a hole with my finger. And we're gonna stick this stem in there and see if it'll re-root itself. And if not, we will just get ourselves a new tomato plant at the store. But the reason that I wanna make sure this, see if this plant will, will do something for me here is because all of the tomatoes I have planted here are all determinate tomatoes. Okay, sorry guys, I have to put you down at kind of a rough angle. Also this hair, I, I can't. Um, but the difference between determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes is gonna be the height that they get to. So these determinate tomatoes, their genetics work so that they have a very determined height and also a determined number of fruit that they put off. And so I really wanted to try this last year um, and get a bunch of tomatoes that I can make sauce with and, and canned tomato sauce, That that's the goal. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I did a bunch of paste tomatoes and ended up with curly leaf virus, which is this really crappy tomato virus that really like messes up your plants. Um, so that's what happened to me last year, but this year, not only do I have my paste tomatoes, which are gonna be regular old Romas and also San Marzanos, which apparently San Marzano tomatoes, like it's kind of like champagne, like it's not technically champagne unless it's grown in Champagne, France. San Marzano is kind of the same thing actually. And um, so San Marzano tomatoes aren't actually San Marzano tomatoes unless they're grown in San Marzano, Italy. So whatever, I'm calling them San Marzano tomatoes, but just so you understand that reference. And then in this middle bed, I'm growing two different types of indeterminate varieties that are not paste tomatoes, but they're gonna be like more of your traditional like round, um, round red tomato. Um, and they're gonna put on a lot a lot of fruit at one time. So the thing with determinate tomatoes is you don't have to prune them. Um, and actually I'm considering not pruning my indeterminate tomatoes either um, based on a book I read um, called Epic Tomatoes by Craig LeHoulier. Definitely recommend checking that book out if you like growing tomatoes. Um, it's got a lot of really interesting research in it. And so um, I will not be pruning these tomatoes. That's why they're here at the community plot um, because they require less maintenance. Um, and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm pretty pumped um, to do it, but the two varieties that I have that are those big round ones are Invincible and Red Snapper. Um, so we're gonna see if this works, but some of my tomatoes are looking a little sad because of that storm. <laughs> so some of them definitely need some support and they definitely need to be trellised. Like this guy's just, He's just falling over at this point. <laughs> so is this one. So I definitely need to find some support. I'm not the biggest fan of tomato cages, to be honest, um, but that might just be where we have to end up because look at how nice and straight that guy is sitting. And then you have this guy who's actually pretty big, but he's just falling over. So I gotta figure out a trellising system for these guys like next week because when tomatoes start growing like this, they just start growing so fast. And honestly, I had good luck with these paste tomatoes last year. Um, these are my Romas, and I actually just got the seeds in like a seed packet, like a random random seed packet, and they were workhorses for me a couple of years ago, so I'm pretty excited to see how they do. And that is everything I've got growing in my gardens uh, in March of 2022. So there's a lot going on, I'm pretty excited. Um, these monthly garden tours are usually pretty crazy because the garden grows so fast. Um, so seeing the difference is pretty, pretty startling. But I'm excited for you to join me for April so we can see how big everything is and see whatever issues tend to come up. That's usually when the pest pressure starts. Um, so yeah. Thanks so much for watching, happy gardening, and we'll see you next time.